Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, April 5. Government says it will continue to monitor and conduct routine tests on imported corned beef from Brazil, even as the temporary ban on the product has been lifted. Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries Carl Samuda yesterday announced the lifting of the ban, which was imposed on March 21. That means that all imports en route, all stocks of corned beef that were quarantined, all stocks of corned beef in warehouses, on the wharf or elsewhere, destined for distribution across the country, can now be released for distribution. He says the ban was removed following exhaustive tests on samples of corned beef on the island, done by the Bureau of Standards, the Ministry's Veterinary Services Division and other agencies. A team from the Ministry also went on a fact-finding mission to Brazil between March 29 and April 2. Minister Samuda says the two main manufacturers of imported Brazilian corned beef to Jamaica were visited and found to meet international standards. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced that the Jamaican Diaspora Foundation and Institute will be shaped to form a new entity called Global Connect Jamaica, GlowJam. Which will be a public-private partnership thrust geared towards encouraging the Jamaican diaspora to invest in Jamaica. Among the objectives of this entity are to connect Jamaicans in the diaspora, promote brand Jamaica globally. The Prime Minister was addressing Tuesday's official launch of the Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference. It will be held at the Jamaica Conference Center in Kingston from July 23 to 26. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, says plans for the rebranded conference are in high gear, adding that the event will form part of the commemoration for Jamaica's 55th anniversary of independence. I am confident that the Jamaica 55 conference will set the stage for a new paradigm in the Jamaica Diaspora Partnership. A portion of money from the Tourism Enhancement Fund will be placed in a special subsidiary account of the Consolidated Fund under a new arrangement guiding the management of the TEF. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett made the announcement as he opened the sectoral debate in Parliament yesterday. He said the money would only be used to cover tourism-related expenditure as approved by the TEF board. The Finance Minister has given that undertaking. He met with the JHTA executive and other stakeholders, and he has given this commitment and have even put it in writing. The commitment is in response to concerns about the government's plan to transfer the resources of the TEF into the Consolidated Fund as a means of exercising better management of state assets. Minister Bartlett says he is fully aware of the concerns and has promised that the necessary accounting and administrative systems will be put in place to ensure that the sector has full access to project funding and financing for critical initiatives. Cabinet has appointed a special subcommittee to assess and evaluate concerns from property owners regarding new property tax rates. Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Senator Ruel Reed, reported on Monday that the committee was to return its findings to Cabinet by today, April 5. Finance Minister Audley Shaw announced new calculations for property tax rates when he opened the budget debate on March 9. The new property tax regime calculates liabilities based on the 2013 valuation role and cuts rates from the range of 1.5 to 2 percent down to 0.8 to 1.3 percent. Minister Shaw also announced that the $1,000 flat rate that previously applied to properties worth $200,000 or less will now extend to properties valued up to $400,000. And finally, Government, through Prime Minister Andrew Holness, has issued a formal apology to the Rastafarian community for the 1963 Coral Gardens incident. Mr. Holness delivered the apology in Parliament on Tuesday. He says the incident was a grave injustice which took place at a time when it was considered appropriate to use the state machinery against citizens. We express our regret and sorrow for this chapter in our national life that was characterized by brutality, injustice, and repression, which was wrong and should never be repeated. In expressing our regret as a people and as a community, we have taken a symbolic, yet courageous, and pivotal move. 
which means that we can face the future with renewed hope, with increased resolve, and with a true spirit of reconciliation. As part of government's atonement, Mr. Holness announced the creation of a trust fund worth $10 million to benefit survivors of the incident. The Prime Minister's formal apology was supported by newly installed Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, who said the Parliament should work to correct the systematic and widespread discrimination of Rastafarians. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.